Oh, well, um, it all turned out okay. <laughs> yes, yes, it did, which is one of those close calls that makes you very grateful for things. I feel like I should go and get my orange glasses. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a habit for me. That's a good habit, mate. I, I normally put mine on a little bit later, but that, that's a good habit. Mm. Did, did you see my uh, Did you see my ratio score? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's. Um, I think that's pretty pretty normal. Um, it just depends. I I think that ratio can get really skewed if if you have a lot of debt, but also uh, sometimes it's like if that debt is is like income producing then i wouldn't actually put it in there um like raj's homes i wouldn't put it in there just because there's no there's no reason to really get yeah the thing is you're still on the line in case you don't get tenants but overall if you do have tenants they should be paying the majority of that yeah 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 which is also which is the principle good though. yeah which is also something that can be um you know that is only just taking in what you live and work today so there is other assets and there's other things that could be on that but it's pretty much just looking at what we can make today to how long we can live off of that um cuz even yes. my even my cuz i put 10 to 12% into of all my income into investing so even that is still not counted like I, I want that to be above and beyond so i guess one of the cool things that you can really do when you start going through these um like even raj's did, did you get raj's budget yeah and, and i've operated off a similar thing mm. i've got one on my own, which is very similar yeah, yeah. perfect yeah so we don't use it we don't use it these days yeah <laughs> <laughs> but those things are just nice to actually get an idea of because I've even plugged in the numbers so that it now has like if I like let's just say I have a car loan and let's say I don't have a car loan anymore you can just erase you can take that out and see how much it improves your live to work ratio yes um, so yeah so it might just be the two of us tonight um okay is is there is there anything else you any other questions you had on the live to work ratio or anything you wanted to go over on that side uh probably not i mean i, I really was just looking at mine and, and what we're just talking about now you know like that that if we do strict stick to the formula strictly then that's the that's the figure that i which what happened today was this is this is what you're talking about with skewed is that we got to punch if i put it on top of the income and reduce the debt then we drop down to minus three point eight or something, you know. So it, it can it can vary if we're not a, a stable income earner, I guess. Mm. We have numbers come in sometimes. Too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think for our purposes, I think that 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 brings home that we're we're certainly living a little bit on our on our means. We're living on our credit, but we're we're relying on that credit to to make us money in the future. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, another thing to think about when, when you know, um, <laughs> with with the way the world is today, what what would happen if your interest rate went up by, let's just say, three percent to get back to even within normal ranges? You know? Yes. So that's another reason that, I mean, debt can be an amazing tool, but can also be a very heavy burden to carry, though, too. So that's why, personally, I haven't had a car loan since i was in my young 20s and the only reason that i had a car loan then was because i wanted to buy a house so i had to build credit and yeah, right. um, so i've only i've only had one car loan in my life and if i can't afford to buy the car i want i buy a cheap piece of shit and run it until until i have saved up the money for the nice car that i do want i can just pay cash for it and yeah, yeah, makes sense, yeah. overall, even if you look at your your home as well, where I've done I've done the numbers where if I do if I do fifteen year payments instead of thirty, just keep socking away into the offset account, you know, how much money I'll save over the life of the loan and it's it's you know, many years off of the loan. 
So I, I paid my any... first house off in, in five years. Yeah, nice. Based on the same principles, as soon as you start making a real dent in that um, in that interest payment, yeah, yeah, mm, makes a huge difference, doesn't it? Mm. Mm. Very good. All right. Well, let's yeah. let's start on the on the next one for today. So I'm just going to start with a quick little video. I found another good one to just go along with today's exercise. So I'll start with that. Good morning. Good morning, Roshan. All right, class, settle down, settle down. Today's assignment is a little bit different to what we use. Today, I've got a question that I want you to answer. And the question is, what do you want to be when you grow up? Now, I want you to think about this very carefully. Answer it honestly. Don't worry about what people are going to think because nobody else is going to see this. I do want you to think about why. Take your time and answer this honestly. All right, guys, that's all we have time for today. Can I please have your sheets as you're leaving? Thank you. Very nice. Thank you. Well done today. Good job. Have a nice day. Thank you, Boomi. Thank you, John. Bye, Chance. John, can I speak to you for a second? Yes, miss. John, I think you've misunderstood the assignment. Miss, I think you've misunderstood life. In the hope for money, in the hope for success, we end up chasing the wrong things and we make a mess. We end up with less than we started with, end up with more issues than we bargained for. Whilst climbing that ladder and that stairway, we forget why we started climbing in the first place. Once the king of Bhutan was asked by an interviewer what the GDP of Bhutan was, he was surprised and shocked. He replied by saying, in Bhutan, we don't just measure the GDP, we measure the GNH. Instead of just measuring the gross domestic product, we measure gross national happiness. In the process of getting older, we forget the real goal of life. If you could make a little less and spend more time doing what you love, would that make you happier? Don't trade your happiness for what you think you need. Things can never make us happy because they're temporary and limited, but experiences can last forever. Too many people are working hard on things they don't love, to spend money they don't have, to buy things they don't need, to impress people they don't like. When we create our identity around what we do, a career, a job, an occupation, we can never be happy because we're basing it on something external. But when we create an identity around who we are and what we want to be and become, then anything is possible. And remember, we become successful by what we get, but we become happy by what we give. Don't get the two confused. Another beautiful and inspiring video. Um, so that one came up just in time. And let me switch over to the PowerPoint. So today's PowerPoint, I'll leave the disclaimer up for a minute, but obviously this is not trading <laughs> and uh, investment advice. But um, overall, today is about finding our North Star. 
Let me just turn yours back on. I unmute you just now. Okay, cool. Um, and so, you know, this is about finding what our core values are. So, um, so what is your Northern star? So it's something that gets you really excited, something that you would do even if people wouldn't pay you to do it could be a passion that you had as a kid. It could be something that you truly believe in. Could be something that, that um, is a guide to you. Could be your legacy that you leave on this earth. Um, you are the author of your life. Do what fulfills us should be our number one pri priority, doing what fulfills us. So what our North Star is not, so it's what society says it should be. It's drive a fancy car, wear nice clothes, be a university graduate, work a nine to five job that makes your family and friends proud. You name it, we are stuck in a box created by society. Most of us have lost sight of what our Northern Star really is. So I put this in because one of my mentors had once told me that like a ship that's on rough seas, it can, it can sail back and forth. But as long as you have that destination, that port, that Northern star where you know where you're going, you can always get back on course. Every life brings us storms, brings us crazy waves. But the big thing is, that we stay on destination. We might veer over for a little bit, we might veer this way or that way, but the big thing is that we stay on destination. So, you know, today, 90 plus percent of boats that have a destination make it there, but there's not many boats that leave a harbor and have no idea where they're going, and they could end up anywhere. So really, it's, it's, it's keeping your destination, your northern star, as, a, as the main thing that you're working towards. So finding your values. First, first one of these, actually, I'll skip over back to here. The, what today is over is part of that living project blog. It's finding your nor Northern star. So we're going over step one today. And there is a list of 400 values, which is right here under Steve Pal Pavlina's um, website. So I'll link this today. So what I've done is, uh, Sue's actually was the one that had the idea is I've taken, the, there's over 400 values here. I've taken them all and I've put them all into two sheets. So what you can do is at night before you go to bed, you can just look at them and just cross off the ones that do not resonate with you. Um, I've gone through the list once before, but I'm redoing it now. So you can, you know, these are just ideas. You might, you might have a value that's not even on this list, but this could inspire you to thinking of what that value actually is. So first thing we want to do is we want to print off this list of over 400 values. Step two is you want to go, go through and see which ones actually resonate with you, which ones like actually touch your heartstrings. So if, if, it, it's pretty easy actually to just go, nope, 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 nope. It, you can go through 200 of them in 10 minutes. Um, and then the next thing you want to do is pick your top 12. So once you pick your top 12, that's your dozen that, that you're going you're gonna to use for another exercise we're going to do later on. But then of those 12, you have to pick your top three to thrive. So you want to pick the three that are the most important to you. So we'll distill 400 down to 12, then 12 down to three. Then you want to print them off and place them in place, you know, put them in places you will see them all the time. So uh, one of the things that we'll do in a further step um, is this is, what, this is what Suze has done and it's an absolute brilliant idea. She's got this vision board that is it's gorgeous, best vision board I've ever seen in my life. And what she did was she took those 400 values, whittled, dwindled them down to about 10. 
she printed them off and then she's got them scattered throughout her vision board next to pictures that they pretty much rep represent. So we'll do that in another exercise, but for now, we can print those 12 or print those top three, put them in the mirror so that you see them in the morning, put them maybe in the dashboard of your car, put them somewhere where it's going to regularly re remind you. You can even put an alarm on your phone um, for a random part of the day that, that makes you present, that brings you back and, and makes, you, makes you think about those values, your, your top values. So. What our, what our homework for today is there's lots of beautiful YouTube videos. I'm going to link some of them um, in later on, but you want to use these videos to help you discover what your core values really are. And then look inside and see how those values are your gifts to this world. And then, then obviously list your top values and print them and, and place them where you can see them often. So a few of the links that I'm going to send are the original blog by, by Cedric Dahl. But then here's the list of 400 values. I'll also give you guys a, a, a list that you can just print off that will all be on two different pages. Um, but then I have a couple of really good YouTube videos. Um, two of them are actually uh, TED Talks. One of them is Simon Sinek, which start with... Um, Start with Why is, is an absolute amazing book and follows follow this, these principles very well. But then another one that I actually watched today that I wanted to share with you guys anyways was uh, two of my personal heroes, which is Peter Diamantes and Tony Robbins. They got together and they do this webinar once a year and they talk about what they're most excited about. And some of the questions that they got really hit home to like values and and chasing what you really want to do in your life so I'll, I'll link all of these for you guys um and that's it um yeah do you have any questions no that's uh that's pretty simple but a good way to start i think mm. yeah so there, there's going to be another really great exercise of these exercises are kind of falling in line the way they need to be. So the, the first one is kind of having a broad idea of where we are. Then this exercise is now looking at who we really want to be. So with knowing where we are, who we really want to be, the next couple of steps will just fall in line to figuring out what else we want to do with our life. Um, the, and yeah, those, those would be pretty fun as we go as, as well. I like it. It's, it's always a chance to, to reflect and, and, and recreate, I reckon. Mm, very much so. Yeah. And, you know, I, I bring it back to my story where the, the, you know, in 2011, I thought I had everything in the world. I had a house, I had three cars, I had a pretty girlfriend, but none of it really made me happy so the near-death experience brought me back to what I really wanted to do with my life which was to go travel to go have a lot of experiences to do things that yeah. not many Americans really do it's it's quite rare to to find Americans that that do this Canadians all the time their their culture is all about it but uh, it's a crazy statistic about how many Americans even have passports but uh, I just knew I had to do that, and um, yeah, I'm glad to to see that I've inspired other people, like my parents and and several other people, to do the same thing because it's life changing. And you know, a lot of these exercises that I'm working towards are really making it obvious what what I do want to work towards. So what 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 kind of a life I want to live. So. It's been a it's been okay. a trying trying year to say the least, but I think of it as um, you know when my knee happened, it was turning one of the worst things that's ever happened to me and turning it around and making it one of the best. So now I want to I want to also think what you know this is giving me a really great chance to reflect, but not only reflect but build a great foundation of where I want to go with a lot of different things in my life. So 
I think they were all blessings, all of them. Are. So everything, everything in time is a blessing. <laughs> That's true. That's very true. <laughs> awesome, mate. I like it. All right. Are you, are you doing this as a, as a series for a lot of people, or are you just starting out with you with with this as a as a YouTube channel? I, uh, you know, I'm just putting it on YouTube because it's easy to get it to you guys. Because there's there's people that want to watch them, but um, aren't available to do it on Tuesday nights. So I'm just it's just an easy way to send them the links. Like for my father, it's it's uh, like. 4.51 in the morning where he is so he's not going to jump on at 4.30 in the morning so it's good for him to be able to watch the videos but then I've got a few other people that are really interested they just can't can't get on and so it gives them a little bit more flexibility yeah I think in the long run all of these things will just be more more stuff to add to the, the final curriculum when I when I do build something out but it's it's kind of holding me accountable to getting some of it done as well where i'm getting it done but i would much rather be doing it with people like yourself people that i like so that just you know we can we can all get smarter and better together i mean random things happen where raj puts in his his budget which was really really put a lot of time into that so um that that helped me to do my live to work ratio a lot easier so oh cool cool mm. thanks raj when you're listening yeah <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> but, very cool all right well that was a short easy easy one um yeah in looking forward coming back to the live to work ratio um you know debt is is such a big thing that's why it's one of the things that you have to have on to your live to work ratio because you it's an obligation that you must pay off all the time and and with today it's looking at you know does that car really make me that happy do i really need to pay that much a month for a car paying you know if you start adding up how much you pay in interest as well could you just sell that car buy something that is is maybe society doesn't really think you know is the best car but you could have a longer live to work ratio you could go on a longer vacation you there's there's a lot more that you could do you could invest that money even more so it's you know both of these do kind of work together as far as what what's really going to make you happy what is part of your values and um you know there's so many people out there that financially really never look at their life they're like oh yeah i need a car payment i need a house payment Oh yeah, I've got credit cards, you know, and they don't think that, you know, if you pay your credit cards off every month, you can accrue points and not have to pay any interest. But uh, yeah, sometimes sometimes people don't don't actually take the time to reflect and and see how much they're actually paying in interest a year. So and and usually, when it's out of sight, out of mind it's even worse. So when you, when you have only a hundred dollars in your bank account, you're going to spend within that hundred dollars. But if you got $100, but then you have a $10,000 limit, some people can't trust that they can't trust themselves with their credit cards. So they'll, they'll spend $5,000 and they'll spend a lot more and they'll dig themselves into a hole because maybe they don't have an emergency fund set up. Maybe they don't have something else set up to, to make it easier for them to get out of that hole. So. Yeah, I'm sure it's very common. Yep. It's very common. Uh, yeah. And it probably if you believe the statistics, it's it's becoming more and more that people are further in debt too. Oh yeah, yeah. Big time. Yeah. Mm. And um yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. It's it's very, very interesting days. Um I foresee it's gonna have to get wiped off at one point for for not just all these people that are distressed, but uh, you know, there's there's a lot of banks that you know around the world right now that are are hitting hitting pretty pretty crazy levels. <laughs> so. and, and countries. <laughs> yes, yes, that's exactly right. Yeah. So hi, Minnie. Hi, Nick. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Dean said that uh, you, you're really liking your new job. Yeah, I'm loving it. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Good to hear. Yeah. 
getting out there and talking to people all day long. Best thing that, in the world. Fantastic. <laughs> and the, about real estate, you you like that as well, so. I do, yeah. It's something that, you know, everybody needs a home to live in, whether it's a rental or a or one that you're paying off or, you know, investors have an important part in that picture because an investor needs to rent it to somebody else. So it's about creating space for people to live, really, mm. bottom line. Um, and I just love that. You know, like I'm dealing with a lot of first homies at the moment, which are so fantastic. They're so excited about getting into something. And, yeah, it's really, really good. Just love it. Cool. That's fantastic. Oh, you are. Hey. It's yeah. so much light. <laughs> so very cool did you did you go and see that movie no no we didn't have a chance to are you guys yeah. you guys going to come watch the movie on friday uh, is it friday friday i'm not sure um 6 45. it's only it's only got it's only got one showing is it okay ah, okay all right I'll, I'll, I'll let you know I, i'm not I, I think we're right friday i think it is yeah, yeah, yeah. is it saturday or sunday or Sunday we can't. Yeah. Saturday, I don't know. Yeah, I'll have to have a look. <laughs> we'll get back. To no, but really. I think yes, yeah. we'll get tickets. Yeah. Yeah, if we see you guys, it'd be fantastic. If not, no worries. We'll catch you on the next one. No worries. We'll let you know either way, mate. Yeah. All right. Very good. All right. Nice talking to you. Then. See you guys. Have a good night. Have a good night. See ya. Bye. Yeah. Well, bye. Yeah. Yeah.